If you win by an inch or a mile, a win is still a win. <laughs> Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton, I am your humble narrator, welcome back to another Gen 7 Monotype Battle, oh yes. This week we are working on uh, the brand new type, the Fairy type. Quite interesting, uh, it's helped me learn some of the resistances and uh, weaknesses of this type, which obviously is really really helpful. So. Make a fairy type if you're having trouble remembering what's what about it. Um, as for what it's strong against, it is strong against fighting, uh, dragons, and dark. It is not strong against poison, steel, and interestingly enough, fire. Uh, and the last Pokemon in this team is meant to remedy that uh, fire weakness, as it were. Offensive weakness, I guess I'd call it. Um, you need to watch out uh, when you're defending against poison, steel, and I believe that's it. So, really, really nice. Um, there are a lot of dragons fighting and dark types in the metagame, or at least there were up until the fairy type came along. So this is just one typing that sort of uh, changed everything around, similar to how the dark typing came along and uh, dethroned the psychic types. So fairies come along and somewhat dethroned the dragon types, which I think is really, really cool. Uh, a bit more of a balanced metagame these days. So I appreciate that a lot. Good job to Game Freak. They don't hear that very often, I'm sure. So the first Pokemon that we have on the team, our reliable lead Pokemon, is a Klefki. I've given it Light Play and Prankster, which uh, Prankster lets any ability that doesn't do damage go before anything else, which is really, really helpful for moves such as Reflect, Light Screen, Spikes, all of which it has. And then I've given it Dazzling Gleam, basically so it's not Taunt Bait. Uh, if you have all all moves that aren't attacking uh, and somebody taunts you, then you're going to be able to do nothing but struggle, which is really not a good thing to do. You'll be forced out, uh, but Klefki can stick in there, Dazzling Gleam some stuff in the face uh, if I feel the need to. It's uh, EV spread, 252 HP, 252 defense. And then it's got an impish nature, I believe it is, to increase the defense even more. So it is quite a, a defensive wall. Uh, and if you see those physical type attacks coming, you can throw up a reflect and you'll take 50% less damage. Same with the special attacks, you throw up a light screen and you're definitely going to live through those hits. So Klefki gets up uh, spikes and or the screens in every single match that I've played with it. <clears throat> so if we end up revisiting the Steel Monotype. Uh, I think I haven't done one since like Gen 5 or something like that. So we might revisit Steel at some point and you'll definitely see Klefki on the team because it is just a killer screener uh, and sets up entry hazards extremely well. So it's on this team to stay for sure. Quite a bomb Pokemon and uh, yeah. I, I don't need to justify it any further. That, that's good enough. Try it out for yourself. You might think it's just, it's just a bunch of keys. It's pretty lame. But uh, for a lame looking Pokemon, it, it definitely packs a, a punch, or allows other Pokemon on the team to pack a punch, as you will see. Next Pokemon up is Tapu Koko, which is um, an interesting type. It, it has like um, a bunch of different forms. There's like a Water and Fairy, a Grass and Fairy, Psychic and Fairy. But for this team, we have chosen the Electric and Fairy. Uh, basically because it has a huge attack stat and an even more huge speed stat. Uh, and with the choice band, that thing is going to punch some holes and stuff. Its ability is Electric Surge, which is kind of interesting. It basically electrifies the battlefield for five turns once you send it out. Nothing on this team has any synergy with it, uh, but we'll be doing an Electric Monotype next week and you will see some uh, synergy with it there. And it's really, really nice. Um, we basically got Brave Bird, Wild Charge, Steel Wing, and U-Turn for his moves, all of which do really, really nice damage, albeit with uh, some recoil. But overall, I find that the recoil damage is worth it, and uh, the Pokemon is fast enough that it doesn't take any return hits. So basically, the recoil damage is all you're going to be taking uh, if you're sweeping the opponent's team correctly. Basically, put a dent in everything, and then bring Tapu Koko in and he'll be able to sweep through the rest of their life with relative ease and uh, you don't need to worry about recoil too much. Uh, just a little bit though. <laughs> he's, he's a really strong Pokemon, really nice attacker, really deserves a spot on the team and uh, we'll see 
how it go. Um, another advantage is the electric typing gets rid of the steel type weakness of fairy, so it makes steel types a neutral hit. That is one of the main reasons that I decided to put him on this team, aside from his amazing attack stat. So, really cool Pokemon. I would suggest trying him out if you haven't uh, tried out any of the Tapus yet. He's a really good introduction to them. Uh, and I really think it's cool how they're all different in their, in their varied forms. And I'm going to try and fit as many as I can into as many different teams as I can. Because it's super interesting and uh, they all... They are all part fairy types, so I figured we should have some representation on this team, and Coco would be the best representation, in my opinion. Third Pokemon up, we have the classic Togekiss. Oh my god, what an asshole this thing is. Um, I've given it leftovers to increase its longevity, and its ability is Serene Grace, which increases uh, secondary effects chance of activating by 30%. So if you're using Body Slam or something, Body Slam has a 20% chance to paralyze. But if Togekiss is using it, it has a 50% chance to paralyze, which is absolutely fucking massive. Uh, unfortunately, Togekiss did lose its normal typing. It's now Fairy and Flying. Uh, I guess not so unfortunate since now it gets to be on this team. But I have decided not to uh, run the Body Slam anymore. I go straight for the Thunder Wave. Uh, so he's running Thunder Wave, Roost, Air Slash, and Aura Sphere. Aura Sphere is going to get rid of those Steel types, which are extremely hurty. And then you've got the uh, Thunder Wave and Air Slash, which with Serene Grace is just a mean thing to do. They're going to have about a 10% chance of breaking through both Paralysis and the uh, Flinch from Air Slash. So Paraflinch might not seem like a, a nice thing to do to your opponent. I have seen a lot of Rage Quits against it. I've been Rage Quit. <laughs> I've been a Rage Quit against it before. Um, but if you're down... Uh, you're definitely not out if Togekiss is on the team because you can flinch your way through two or three Pokemon relatively easily, especially with um, the Roost in the move set. I <clears throat> really like the amount of bulk that Togekiss offers. It is a, a third form evolution and definitely deserves a spot on the fairy type team. So my investment is a 252 attack, special attack rather and uh, Modest type nature which will increase the special attack even further and then we have 184 HP and 72 speed EVs which seems like an interesting spread but it does allow you to uh, outpace a lot of the metagame if you just leave it with a uh, zero investment it's gonna get uh, stomped out by a lot of stuff Stantlers you know you don't want a Stantler to move faster than you what the fuck is that so definitely uh, enough speed to, to make it a threat and then with the bulk, uh, anything that it doesn't outspeed, it can definitely take a hit from, especially with Roost. So Togekiss is definitely an awesome Pokemon. I'm glad to have it on the team, for sure. And um, yeah, I, I think it's deserving of the spot. And then if uh, it sees some Electric-type moves coming its way, you know, Tapu Koko's back there. He can switch in, eat that up just fine. Really, really nice synergy. Um, so Togekiss, try it out, live it, love it. Next Pokemon up is a Whimsicott, uh, which has the Prankster ability just like Klefki. I've given it leftovers to increase its longevity. And then it has Encore, Leech Seed, Moonblast, and Giga Drain. Uh, Encore is a really, really awesome move. If the Pokemon, if the opposing Pokemon starts to stat up or basically do anything that you don't like, uh, you can switch in the Whimsicott and Encore and it will be forced to do that move for, I believe, two or three more turns. So you'll be able to bring in a counter and get a free hit on it if it decides to stay in. Um, so I'd say Encore is almost necessary. And it really fits, you know. Uh, fairies are pranksters, you know, in, in lore. So it's kind of nice to see that uh, theme fitting into this team somewhat. Uh, Leech Seed, obviously just like Leftovers, just like Giga Drain, is going to be increasing your health throughout the match. So hopefully Whimsicott will stay on the field for a good long time especially because you need it for uh, opposing entry hazards, opposing stat-up boosts, things like that. If you're facing an opposing Klefki and it decides to use Reflect, just Encore that Reflect and it will never get the light screen up. Really, really awesome uh, Whimsicott. I really like that they added the Fairy type to it as well. In Gen 5, when uh, it was first introduced, I think it was just a Grass type. Thank you so much. Uh, and... Yeah, with the fairy typing, it definitely has uh, a lot more going for it, especially 
It's still scared of fire types, uh, but fairy can't attack fire that well anyways, so you should be switching out of, out of there regardless. Uh, for EV investment, we have special attack and speed for the most part. Um, speed doesn't seem necessary, especially if you're running Prankster, but if you meet an opposing Prankster user, um, you're definitely going to want to be outspeeding them. And uh, there are a couple of moves, i.e. Moonblast and Giga Drain, that don't take advantage of Prankster, so if you want to hit first with those, then the speed investment is definitely necessary. And uh, obviously I've boosted the speed as well instead of the special attack for the aforementioned reasons. So really an awesome Pokemon, getting better and better with each generation, and I'm glad to uh, be able to show it off on the team today. Uh, our fifth Pokemon, we have Mimikyu, which basically looks like a weird Pikachu doll thing. Um, I've given it a Citrus Berry, and its ability is Disguise, which basically lets it take one free hit from anything. It's super awesome, um, so you'll, you'll avoid damage anytime you're attacked for the first time, unless the opponent has Mold Breaker. Do always watch out for Mold Breaker. Um, but overall, I find it's extremely nice. I have Sword Stance, Shadow Sneak, Play Rough, and Wood Hammer as a, a coverage move. Basically, you're going to get the Sword Stance up, break through their disguise, get a second Sword Stance if you like, and then uh, you'll eat the Citrus Berry, which puts you at a pretty good range of health. And then you can just go nuts, go ham with Shadow Sneak, Play Rough, occasionally with Wood Hammer. Shadow Sneak obviously being my favorite move because it does offer same type attack bonus and priority which is really, really cool. Uh, for EV spread, we have 252 attack, 252 speed, as per use. Um, and then he's got the, the plus speed instead of plus attack, basically because if you're using Play Rough or Wood Hammer, you definitely want to be striking first. Um, Wood Hammer is quite an interesting move. Um, it offers recoil damage. Basically the reason that I picked it is because it is one of the uh, highest damage moves that this guy can learn at 120 base power. It's kind of hard to say no to Wood Hammer even without the uh, even with the recoil damage. It's it's just a good move to have. Um, so get a couple sword stances up, smash stuff with Wood Hammer, finish it off with Shadow Sneak. Mimikyu is definitely one of the coolest Gen 7 Pokemon in my opinion. And uh, Ghost and Fairy type Definitely haven't seen that before. Really, really interesting, um, and I'm excited to try it out for sure. The final slot um, is what allows my fairy type team to go head to head with fire types because fairy uh, can't hit very effectively. It's not very effective against fire types. I don't know the reason for that, but it doesn't really matter to Pre Marina, who is a water and fairy type, so we're going to be able to take down those fire types. She has an Assault Vest, which uh, increases special defense. Her natural special defense is already pretty good. Uh, she's basically acting as the special defensive wall. Klefki is the physically defensive wall. And uh, the ability Torrent, mm, not so much to talk about there. But her moves, Dazzling Gleam, Surf, Psychic, Shadow Ball, all a really, really good coverage move. You're going to be hitting at least neutrally on just about anything that comes in. And uh, overall, I think Pre-Marina is a really good round choice if you're going to uh, be making a fairy monotype and again fairy monotype good to help you learn the uh, the different typings and stuff like that what it's weak against what it's strong against I guess by now uh, people kind of have it figured out but it definitely threw me uh, the first few times that I played with it and now I feel like I got a bit more of a grasp on it so we'll see how much of a grasp I have on creating a team for this typing in just a moment Alright, so we are up against Lopotok. Um, the, the Pokemon that he leads with is probably the one that I'm the most scared of because it does have a poison typing. Scolipede, the bug poison Pokemon. Uh, I'm going to send out Klefki first. Set up my screens nice and early so hopefully I can get two sets of screens in this match. He goes right for the sword stance which is uh, a pretty scary thing. So I think I'm going to switch up immediately and go into uh, Whimsicott to see if I can't encore him into that sword stance and then perhaps we'll uh, be able to get some shenanigans going. I do set up my, my second light screen. He's still going for sword stance. I think maybe he's going to do it one more time. I'm not 100% sure, but uh, 
the two sword stance let me know that he's kind of a greedy player. He definitely doesn't have baton pass because that uh, passing two stats is not allowed on Pokemon Showdown anymore. You can still do it in a Wi-Fi battle. It's a really, really good idea if you're going to. So I bring in my Whimsicott now, and uh, he's still going for the Swords Dance. He wants those those max attack boosts, which is a mistake, a huge, huge mistake on his part because I'm going to get my Encore on him. And although uh, Moonblast and Giga Drain can't really hit him super effectively, it is going to allow me to bring in a counter and uh, not have to worry about getting hit by that fucking four times attack now. Um, <clears throat> really a strange, a strange uh, play on his part. <clears throat> Pardon me. I probably would have gone uh, towards attack mode after I got my first sword stance. Really, f fucking three sword stances is absolute overkill. Nobody needs that. So uh, in comes the Togekiss now. I'm hoping that I can get the Thunder Wave on him and then I can get my Air Slash going, and that's going to be a super effective hit against basically all of his team except for Caesar and Crustle. Um, but even they can get flinch hacks relatively easy, unless the Caesar is packing the Bullet Punch. That might be a bit of a problem, but um, I'm not too scared because I have Tapu Koko waiting in the wings, and then Primarina also resists the uh, Steel-type moves, which is quite nice. Uh, so he brings in the Caesar now, quite as expected and I'm able to hit that thing with a Thunder Wave. I'm hoping that uh, it's not another stat booster. No, it's a Mega Evolve. Mega Evolve Caesar, so we are uh, doing pretty well crippling his Mega Evolve Pokemon right off the bat. I'm able to weather that Bullet Punch extremely easily because of the Reflex that Klefki, Klefki has set up. Unfortunately, there's only uh, one turn left after my Air Slash, but it should be enough to get him down into KO range. Um, Scissor has always been uh, a massive, massive threat in Pokemon. I don't think since his release he's ever dropped out of the OU tier, and um, for good reason. That that priority bullet punch with Technician Boost is just absolutely massive. So I pull out my uh, Togekiss not wanting to take a bullet punch with the Reflect down, and I bring in Klefki again just to uh, set that Reflect right back up in the Scissor's face. He is paralyzed, he did miss his uh, his bullet punch on that turn because of paralysis, but it would have done basically nothing against Klefki anyways. So now the Scolipede is back in here, I've got my Reflect back up. I don't know if he has that many special attackers, basically Volcarona and Yan Mega are the only special attackers that I would worry about on his team, so I'm not going to bother setting up a light screen the second time around. I'm gonna pull my Klefki out of there, send in the Whimsicott, expecting him to go for the Sword Stance again, and um, he he goes for Earthquake instead, which is just fine. Um, I can keep encoring him into Earthquake, and I'm gonna take basically no damage as well. So again, Whimsicott just showing off the uh, the trolley <laughs> horrible nature. If you're up against the Whimsicott, it's an extremely difficult thing to play around, especially if you're. Uh, trying to do boosting moves or something like that. So now he protects. That's an interesting move to have on the Sword Stance set. Um, I'm wondering what his fourth move is. Maybe Megahorn, maybe Rock Slide. Earthquake and Rock Slide do give perfect coverage, so that would work just fine. But I'm going to take this chance to Encore him into Protect, which is, uh, again, just <laughs> about the trolliest thing that I could do. Whimsicott is such an absolute dick. Um, so his speed boost is going, but he's not going to be able to get those sword stances up. He's going to keep on protecting. I'm going to shoot uh, some Leech Seed at him, and as he switches out of there, which that's just fine. I'm going to be able to Leech Seed whatever comes in, and it is the Caesar once more. Um, he's paralyzed. He's not looking too hot. Unfortunately, I'm not able to uh, launch many attacks against him with my Giga Drain and Moon Blast move set. Um, but fortunately, the Leech Seed is going to keep whoever I bring in on their feet um, for the duration of the match, especially with that with that Reflect up. Um, he's not going to be able to really do anything at all. I'll be surprised if he leaves it in here. Uh, he goes for Roost now, which is a pretty interesting move for a Caesar. Um, not bad, though. I, I thought I was going to get this Mega Evolve poke right off the field, but uh, Roost is a good one to keep your, your Mega Evolve pokes in the fight. 
So he goes for the bullet punch now. Again, it's only doing about 30% thanks to the, uh, the massive reflect that I've set up. Unfortunately, I do miss my air slash there, um, but he still has Leech Seed ticking away on him, which is going to suck him right back down into the range that he was before he roosted. So um, if I can get an air slash, I think that Leech Seed might take him out. Uh, it might be a little... Yeah, it's not going to be anywhere near enough. Uh, Air Slash is doing about 40%. Reflect is going down on the next turn, um, which is not good. There goes my Reflect. I'm pretty scared of taking a regular-ass bullet punch to the face, but I risk it, and luckily, so, so luckily, he gets paralyzed. I probably would have taken only 60% damage. I would have been left with um, about 10% of my health, which would be a bad thing for Togekiss. I also have Roost, so I could heal it up. But obviously that's not something that I want to do. I want to keep the offensive momentum going. And I'm able to do that uh, basically because the scissor was paralyzed. So that was extremely, extremely lucky. Crustle. Every time I see a fucking Crustle, it is a Shell Smash variant. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get the Thunder Wave on that thing right away. Paraflinch, Paraflinch, Paraflinch is the name of the game. Crustle goes for Rock Slide instead of Shell Smash, which is uh, probably a pretty good move. Get the, get the damage on my Togekiss, but Togekiss is just out here doing fucking work. Um, taking absolutely no damage. Uh, Air Slash does about 60% to the Crustal, which is really, really nice. And guess what? I don't get the flinch. <laughs> He's able to rock slide me. Uh, I'm down to that 10% health that I was talking about a bit earlier. But fortunately, um, I'm able to roost before he's able to rock slide, so it will negate my flying typing, and uh, the next rock slide won't do enough to KO me, basically because I'm not flying. I'm roosted, which I think is pretty interesting. So basically I'm, I'm hoping for some para hacks here. Uh, we did have our para hacks a little bit earlier, but you, you can always hope for more. That's never a bad thing. So a little bit more roosting, that never hurt anybody. Eventually, I think he's got a 30% chance of getting paralyzed, and there it is. <laughs> I'm telling you, Togekiss does have uh, Serene Grace. There's just like, the hand of the Poke Gods comes down and it's like, No Rock Slide. Stay right there, Crustle. So, we're able to kill that Crustle with an Air Slash. I probably could have done it while I was at 40% uh, HP after that first Roost, but um, I wanted to be as high health as possible because Togekiss is going to be the operator. We are up against a bug monotype, and I'm really, really scared of that Scolipede. Speaking of the devil, um, <laughs> in comes the Scolipede one more time. So it's going for Protect. Obviously, it knows what I'm going to do, which is either Thunder Wave or Air Slash. There's the Thunder Wave, but he's able to protect his way through it. I could bring in the, uh, the Whimsicott now, just to troll him a bit. But um, I'm going to try and get the Thunder Wave on him, I do think. That seems to be the smart thing to do. So he goes for his Sword Stance now. That's just fine. Um, if his Speed Boost keeps going, the, the Thunder Wave isn't going to matter so much. Because you can get more of a boost from Speed Boost than Paralyze can stop you. Does that make sense? You'll still be faster with the Paralysis. So... I thought I was going to be faster, much as I spoke of just now, um, but with double speed he basically breaks through his paralysis, he's able to move faster than my Togekiss and knock that thing out with a fucking poison jab, so I am in a, a scary scary place at the moment. Klefki's going to come back out here and we're going to set up some more reflects. Poison jab is his fourth move, so now I know he has sword stance protect. Earthquake and Poison Jab, so he's definitely going to be trying to get those Earthquakes on me. And if that is the case, then I can easily switch into Whimsicott. Um, I don't think Whimsicott is going to take that much with Double Attack. We were taking 10% from Earthquakes before, so with Double Attack we should be taking 20% from the Earthquakes, um, presumably. But you never know, those crits are always waiting in the wings. Luckily, uh, we're able to weather that Earthquake because of the Reflect, which is really, really nice. Uh, my Klefki is now at half health, but it's totally worth it to get those screens up, so whatever. Do what you need to do, bro. 
Uh, I'm going to pull my Klefki out of here, so hopefully we can get a fourth set of screens up. And then uh, I'm going to bring in the Whimsicott, hoping that he's not going to go for Poison Jab and predict the switch. No, he goes for Earthquake. It does 25% damage, which is pretty good. Um, I'm going to Encore. I'm going to Encore into Earthquake just to avoid the Poison Jabs that might be coming my way. Um, if I did not have to Reflect Up, those Earthquakes would be doing 50% of my health, which is basically uh, the end of the game for me. Uh, I don't have a whole lot that can stack up against this Scolipede, so we're really trying to play play our way around it. Once this Scolipede is out of the way, the match is basically mine. Um, I've still got Tapu Koko, who has Brave Bird, and that is going to be effective against all of the rest of his Pokémon. Um, however, I don't want to bring the Tapu Koko out and have it just get Poison Jab to death, because this thing is... Uh, I think it'll still move faster with four, four times speed, even with the Paralysis on it. So, um, trying to play some Leech Seed shenanigans here. He is Encored, um, but finally he decides to switch it out. The Earthquake is not working so well. So thank God we got to avoid that uh, Swords Dance Scullipede. And he brings in his Yon Mega now, which is uh, pretty scary as well. I think I have a lot that could uh, take care of it though. Tapu Koko, Klefki, um, yeah, even Pre-Marina and... Basically anybody who's not Whimsicott. <laughs> I do decide to leave the Whimsicott in here. Um, <clears throat> I can't really justify a reason why. Should've known the Air Slash was coming. Um, Yon Mega basically always carries Air Slash because he is a bug and flying type, so that has the same type attack bonus. Um, I can always take advantage, though, of the fainted Pokemon. Oh my god, this Yon Mega also has speed boost. <laughs> That is so not good. He's a speed boost motherfucker. So I bring in my Mimikyu now, and basically I know that I'm going to be able to uh, heal up and sword stance while he's being leech seeded to death. He sees that coming, obviously, and decides to switch out in his, into his Golisopod, um, which is a really, really interesting Pokemon. I don't know too much about it. Is it a pure bug type? Bug water, maybe? Hmm. I'm going to treat it like it's a, a pure bug type, because I'm not too sure. So I get my sword stance up, which is really, really nice. He goes for Aqua Jet to break my disguise. So yeah, Aqua Jet, I assume it is a bug and water type. Um, I'm going to go ahead, uh, basically because my disguise was busted, it's not much of a problem. We're going to go ahead and uh, play rough, which he also has a citrus berry on him, which that's a surprise. I thought I was going to get a two-hit KO here, but it doesn't seem to be the case. I could try and bring in uh, Klefki to get more screens up, but I'm going to see how his Aqua Jet does against the Mimikyu, especially because I don't want to waste the disguise. I do have uh, a Swords Dance up, so I'm going to go ahead and go for the second Swords Dance now as he goes for Aqua Jet. Um, Aqua Jet not doing so much damage. It's not too bad. Especially since I also have a Citrus Berry, it's not going to be a 3-hit KO, and um, I miss my play rough, which is a rough, rough thing. I probably could have knocked him out with that move, um, but the RNG is just not having it today. Fortunately, I uh, get him down to the critical range, under 40%, and his ability, which is Emergency Exit, activates, and uh, he's basically forced to switch out goes into Skullipede, which uh, this fucking thing has, has been a thorn in my side the entire match. I'm, I know Play Rough isn't going to hit well, I know Woodhammer's not going to hit well, so I decide to go for Shadow Sneak. Uh, unfortunately, he does have the Poison Jab waiting for me, and that is the end of my Mimikyu, which I was really hoping would just sweep the rest of his team. It probably could have knocked out that uh, Yan Mega relatively easy, and uh, it was doing some good damage to the Golisopod as well, but that ability um, kind of saved his bacon, as it were. So now comes the Pre-Marina. I do have Psychic on this thing. Pre-Marina with Assault Vest. Hopefully I'll be able to take this Scolipede down with just one Psychic. Uh, he is at half health. His special defense isn't that good naturally. So uh, Pre-Marina is kind of, kind of one of my last bets. I mean, I do have the Tapu Koko, but I was hoping that uh, it wouldn't come down to, to that because he does have the Volcarona. Volcarona is another really, really scary Pokemon. Luckily, Pre-Marina is just able to lift that fucking Poison Jab with 8% HP, 
and come back with the psychic to KO. That was a really close call. Um, Scolipede was getting those speed boosts up there, and yeah, I, I'm not sure that my Tapu Koko would have been able to outspeed if he had KO'd the Primarina. So, he's back into Golisopod now, which I'm not sure if it's faster or slower, but it definitely has that Aqua Jet, which even at not very effective, it's going to knock the Primarina out from 8% uh, HP. So, now... Our next move, guess what, Klefki, gonna set up a, a fifth set of screens. I guess it's fourth or fifth in this match. Klefki, obviously an extremely, extremely good Pokemon if you're if you're trying to uh, set up screens and keep yourself alive. He brings in the Volcarona finally, uh, the first time we've seen this thing in this match. And I set, I set up the Reflect, uh, expecting to go, be going against Golisopod. Now I'm gonna have to set up the light screen uh, for Volcarona and Yen Mega, which is just fine. He's gonna hit me with Fiery Dance, which is gonna be enough to KO me with a critical hit. I think even without the critical hit, it probably would have been able to uh, take me down with relative ease. So I know Fl Volcarona has Flame Body. I'm really hoping that Tapu Koko just doesn't come in here and get burned, which would be a really, a really bad thing. It would be the end of my run, basically. So uh, I know. Fairy type move's not going to do that well. Um, I do get burns, <laughs> but I'm able to take the Volcarona down. I do have screens up. Uh, I think both of his Pokemon are relatively low health, and I do have the super effective move. So we might be able to work through the burn with Tapu Koko. It's definitely going to come down to the wire. This is uh, a really well-made team. Bug Monotype, extremely strong. One of the first Monotypes that I did on the channel. Uh, Golisopod's only able to do 16% with Aqua Jet. Now comes the Brave Bird. Boom! Sack that thing. <clears throat> and then I basically have to just hope that I'm faster than his Yan Mega. Without speed boost, I think I am going to be faster. I think we do have this match in the bag. But uh, it came extremely close. I'll probably end up knocking myself out with recoil. But hey, if you win by an inch or a mile, a win is still a win. So, 17% on the Yan Mega. Ooh, good thing I put a hole in this thing early on. And yeah, even my recoil damage, even the burn, not able to knock out the Tapu Koko. Fantastic work. Oh my god. What a close match it was. <laughs> I do hope that you enjoyed it, friends. Try making a Fairy Monotype for yourself. If you would have uh, tweaked this team in some way, do let me know how. Because, um... I'm not perfect, you know, I'm open to suggestion. Uh, I do appreciate you watching. I would appreciate if you would like, comment, and or subscribe if you have not done any of those or all of those before. I've been Brandon Dayton, friends, your humble narrator. This has been Pokemon Gen 7 Monotype Fairy Battle. Fairy versus Bug. And uh, we, we just barely came out on top, which that's, that's really how I like it. I like the close battles, so... Edge of your seat, I hope you enjoyed, <clears throat> and I'll see you next week, friends. Until then, bye. One, two, three, four, goodbye, goodbye, see you again. Goodbye, goodbye, see you, my friends.